Now, they look like something from the future, but solar-powered cars have been racing through the Australian outback for decades. The 3,000-kilometre World Solar Challenge from Darwin to Adelaide. It's a daunting prospect, but the drivers can be certain of one thing. There is plenty of sunshine to keep their engines running. And even though the event is not until October, one Sydney-based workshop is already close to completing their racing machine. Rachel Papazzoni has more. I'm here in the workshop at the University of New South Wales where a team of more than 60 people is just days away from racing this car from Darwin to Adelaide in the World Solar Challenge. To tell me a little bit about that event is Chris Selwood from the World Solar Challenge organisation. Chris, when did this event first start? We ran the first one in 1987, which seems an awfully long time ago. Has a lot changed since then? Oh, heaps has changed. And I think one of the successes of the event is that we've evolved the regulations as technologies evolve to keep it fresh and to keep it alive. And this car is the very latest iteration where a few years ago we found that some teams were looking at building cars not to win because it was about who would get to uh, Adelaide first, the world's most efficient electric car. But they are motivated by building a practical car. So taking that as our lead, we created a set of regulations uh, based on a German car called the Bow Cruiser to create the Cruiser class. And these guys here at Sunswift have built a Cruiser class car, which uh, is looking very nice, I have to say. Now, the World Solar Challenge attracts people from all over the world, as its title would suggest. Can you tell us a little bit about the people competing? Oh, look, as varied as the planet itself. 26 countries are coming, lots of different cultures. Um, we've got people from Saudi Arabia, we've got people from Iran. We transcend those political divides. And it's all about bright young people, not only dreaming of a cleaner, greener future, but working hard to make those dreams become a reality. It's quite a, an awesome race, and, and the vision that we will see when the race kicks off in October is quite spectacular, all these pretty impressive-looking cars driving in the desert. But it's not just a race, is it? No, it's, a, it's, it's primarily a design competition. The on-road component really is the proof of concept. Does the design work? Can you get from Darwin to Adelaide on the power of the sun? Well, speaking of design, let's take a look at this car, and this is a built by the University of New South Wales. The team here has been working for over a year. There's 60 of them taking part, and this is the team manager, Sam Patterson. Sam, tell us a little bit about the type of work that's going into this car. We can see your team here working pretty busily on it. Is it, is it quite high tech? It's very high tech. Uh, we've been working long and hard on this car, and there's a lot of technology that's gone into it. Um, we spent from July last year working on the designs, we started construction in New Zealand earlier this year. We sent a team over to Core Builders Composites. So the real um, technical essence of this car is, is very solid. We've put a lot of effort into making sure it's safe and reliable. Um, but also looks really quite beautiful and striking as a, as a real solar car. It doesn't matter how it does in the race right now, although obviously we're hoping to perform well. Um, yeah, look, we just wanted to change people's perceptions on what a solar car actually is. Let's take a look at some of the technology. Now, a moment ago, this car had a, a solar panel on top of it, but now what am I seeing in here? It looks like the inside of a... Well, there seems to be hundreds of batteries in there. That's essentially our fuel tank. So this is one half of our battery pack. The other half sits right next to it there. We're still in construction, but it's almost finished. We see the battery management board sitting on top here, and we've got our battery modules. They're essentially laptop batteries sitting there. Um, that's enough power to get us to drive 500 k's on a charge without sun. With sun, we'll actually get an extra 150 k's on an average sunny day. Um, so that sort of does really well compared to your average uh, electric vehicle, which is sort of struggling to get a bit over you know, 100, maybe 200 k's on a charge. Um, they also only weigh 60, 63 kilos, which is mandated by the rules. Let's move down the car now and have a look at some of the other aspects of it. We can see a few, few of your team members here building, uh, working on the inside of the car. It doesn't look too luxurious. Well, as per any other supercar, um, you'll find that they're quite spartan inside. Very bare bones, keeps it nice and light, very efficient. And that's how we get our extended range on this car. You'll notice there are carbon fibre wheels and lightweight mechanicals inside, some of which we're still waiting on, but they'll be here and the car will be rolling hopefully within the next week. Um, like I said, there's obviously a lot of work to do, but being students, we know how to pull the hours.
Now, the most uh, noticeable difference, I guess, for, for people at home is these solar panels which uh, are being put on the car now and will cover most of it. They're crucial, aren't they, to the whole thing? Absolutely. So apart from our power source in the front, the battery, which acts as a reservoir for energy, um, we get energy from the sun to effectively extend our range on the race. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of high technology here. And they actually, you know, obviously are very thin and flexible, also, again, very light, um, but they're very durable. In past cars, we had a, a textured finish on the top, and that actually wasn't too uh, durable in terms of scratching and um, other dust and that sort of thing that would get on it. You mentioned a moment ago when you were talking about um, cramming in the hours that being uni students that's quite uh, a handy technique to have. On that same note, how do you go with funding a car like this? Uh, again, we work long and hard to find the sponsors. Um, cash is particularly difficult in this environment, so we've done very well with in-kind sponsorship. All the carbon fibre in the actual car, um, a lot of the parts, some of the machining, a lot of things had discounts if they weren't able to give full sponsorship. Um, and then again, back to the advice from people. So we do have cash, and that mostly comes from the University of New South Wales. They've actually sponsored us. They've backed us really well, and we're very thankful for that. Um, we then have to produce a result and make sure everyone's happy with it. But from what everyone's seen so far, they're, they're really positive and very encouraged. So it's great news. Well, best of luck for the uh, event. And as I mentioned, the race does kick off uh, from Darwin at the start of October and they race all the way down to Adelaide. Some of these cars can do it in four days.